That's right. All right, it looks like we're back up. Hopefully this will get rid of the buffering and everything will be good. Hmm. Well, all right, I apologize for that, that uh, interruption there. It seems like we're having a little bit of trouble with YouTube, which is funny because we were filming directly through YouTube, but we've got our uh, streaming software that we normally use with our other breaks just because I always have to use a, a different stream for the random.org and whatnot so we're just going back to using our software um, but anyway as I was saying previously before I was so rudely interrupted by a major letdown of technology in my life uh, I had kind of a hard time not opening this this week I've had it for a few days certainly been looking forward to the break uh, want to really uh, give a huge shout out to Ivan for, for tweeting the link to this break more than, you know, a few times during the last month just to try to drum up interest. Uh, we certainly appreciate that. And really, this is one of those things where, you know, I just wanted an excuse to open an 81 Donruss box. Um, you know, there's some of the folks that, that bought spots that, you know, we're all kind of in the same age group and we grew up with this and uh, has a little bit extra meaning to us so uh, I certainly thank everybody that bought spots and uh, hopefully we will uh, we'll have a good time with it I'm going to take just a second to send out another tweet since obviously the link that was included with the last one is no longer working so I'm going to send that out real quick Got that sent out in case anybody out there wants to uh, wants to watch. I'll give it a few more minutes since I had to kill that that previous link. Hey, John, you're back. Good. Glad I didn't lose you there. Like I said, I don't know what was going on, but that first uh, go through YouTube just was shuddering like crazy. This one seems a lot more stable, so I just had to fire up our streaming software. But as you can see, we have a lovely, wonderful box of 81 Donruss. Uh, I got the sealed box from Baseball Card Exchange, although I don't know why anybody would bother resealing a box of 81 Donruss, but you never know, people are crazy. Um, and this is a real wax box, 36 packs, 18 cards, so that's 648 cards. Goodness gracious, there are cases today that don't have that many cards, so... I'll go ahead and tear into it, and we'll get started. Hopefully some of the other fellows will join us. Actually, I'm going to cut it low. I don't want to mess up the box. I just want to barely cut the seal so I can take it off. Well, this is some crazy cell thing that the folks use. You can see their little logo there on the back. Uh, you can tell by the sound of it how rigid it is. All right, there we go. I'll throw this away. Well, it's a heavy box, too. Heavy box. And really, it almost looks like a cello box from the height of it. It's about the size of like an 82. It reminds me of kind of like an 83 or 84 FLIR cello box. But we'll go ahead and open it up. I feel like I'm unearthing some rare artifact. Which I guess you can make the case that I am. Yeah, back when you actually... What are these? 35? 30 cents. Yeah, I remember when they made the jump to 35. And I want to say it was in 83 or 84. And I was totally heartbroken because... You know, when they were at 30 with sales tax, if you're a little kid and you had a dollar, you were, you know, 
you you were rolling in some high cotton there. You were big time. You could get three packs and still have a few cents left over and probably get a piece of candy or something. Um, but yeah, this is a an actual real pack. So we'll get started with pack one. I forgot that, yes, there is a stick of gum in these. I probably won't chew it just because I don't have that many sick days at work for the rest of the year and I would hope to not use them if I don't have to. I was trying to do this without totally ripping the wax. Not that it matters, but I always saved wrappers when I was a kid. Now this is pretty funny. First part out is Bob Pate. So here's the gum. And it actually, still intact, didn't stick to the wrapper. Of course, it's got that powder coating all over it. Uh, there's no telling what kind of preservatives are in that, but probably enough to kill all of us if we chewed a piece. So, let's see. Bob Pate. The Bull. Of course, I always remembered him more with the Cubs later in the 80s. Jorge Ortega. Very well-centered. Dave Palmer, Hal McRae, Tim Stoddard, Cliff Johnson, pictured as a Cub, but in described the team as the A's. Not sure how we will treat that. We'll have to refer to uh, box break rules, although I don't think it really matters. Mickey Rivers with the wonderful old school ranger outfit. Bill Travers. Jim Tracy. Jeff Zahn. You can tell that the Donner's folks back then did not employ the airbrush the way the Tops people did. We were one pack in, we've already got two uh, team name uniform mismatches. Jeff Zahn pictured with the twins. Dave Stapleton. It's probably a good thing that Eric's not watching this. He'd lose his mind with the terrible centering on some of these cards. And this one with the OPG rough cut on the bottom. Jesus Figueroa, again, pictured as a cub. Stated as the Giants. Of course, this is a first edition box, so... Uh, this is, They're just kind of getting started, I guess. Figuring things out. Larry DeBazinski. Scott Sanders. Looks like he's about 12 feet tall. Rich Gale for the Royals. I have to say, John, I love the paper stock of this. And again, it's just because it was like my first big set. It was the first set I actually built. I was eight years old and I built two complete VGX condition sets. Of course, then I didn't have, you know, all the protective boxes. And I literally kept these cards in shoe boxes. Sammy Stewart and Ivan De Jesus with of course a lovely gum stain on the back. Well that gum does stain though. Look at that. I think there should be a premium for those. Somebody should put together like a gum stain set. That would be cool. So there's pack number one. We're off to a rip-roaring start. I'm very partial to the design, but I, I think it's more just from nostalgia's sake. Although I will say that in 2002, when we put together the Donner's Originals product, I was pretty pissed at Ben that he didn't select 81. He, he went the 82, 84, 86 route. He started with the even years, and then next year supposedly was going to do the 81, 83, 85, and 87. But of course, that never came to fruition because the product bomb and, you know, never got around to part two from it. Again, gum, somewhat sticking to the wrapper. I'm going to save those. Maybe I'll send those into PSA and get graded. I wonder if anybody's done that yet. 81 Donruss gum pieces, PSA 10. Get them now while you can. Bob Watson.
Dwayne Murphy, woefully off center. But I guess that's part of the charm of cards like this. Some of them are supposed to be off center. That's what makes it special when you get that just perfectly centered copy with four four sharp corners. Duffy Dyer. Yeah, this this stuff is. I'm assuming it's like it's 12 point stock, so it's definitely less substantial even in 81 than the top stock and the clear stock. These are thinner than all than both of them. Where they felt like 14 or maybe even now they're not I don't think they're 16 but they're probably 14. Heck this might even be 10. I don't have a micrometer on me or I would mic it and see how thick it was. Jackson Todd. That was a terrible picture. Dan I love I've always loved this picture. He's looked like seriously why are you taking my picture? Come on now, leave me alone. I gotta get ready for batting practice. Awesome Seattle uniform too. Gary Maddox. Oh the Hawk in all of his greatness, the pre cubby years. Probably where he ruined his knees. Great picture though. It's a bad, bad man right there. Clint Hurdle with a huge wad of tobacco. Benny Iowa. Terrible top to bottom centering. Tom Brickens. Looks like he might have popped a Quaalude about 30 minutes before the photo shoot there. Joe Morgan from his Astro days. And from the background, looks like he's in Wrigley Field. Bob Davis, big grin on his face, might just be happy that he got a card. Leo Sutherland with the awesome, awesome white socks uniform, with the, even with the collar. How great is that? Dan Ford. Jeff Burroughs with the Braves in their beautiful uniform. John Lowenstein. That's quite the look he's throwing down too. I just want to put that out there. Quite the look. And then a very young and spry Alan Trammell. Looks like he's ready to go right now. And of course, this is the special gum stain variation. Yeah, Dan Ford, maybe he's like Reggie's like stunt double or something. I don't know. Maybe we should have like a, it seems like something to do if everybody goes to the National. Everybody bring in gum and, you know, you break off a piece. And, you know, if you can guess the year, that's, that's some really great memory right there. Oh, we're getting ready to pull your favorite, man. Look at this. I know you recognize that guy. And well, speaking of a chaw, he's got a massive mount full. Set that wrapper over there. Mr. Brett. Let me try to get this gum piece off of the back without messing up either one. Well, that gum is stubborn on this card. Have to bend the card a little bit. There we go. Save that gum. Oh yes, George Brett. Wow, this is quite a little pack here. Eddie Murray right behind him. That's some quality. Steve Murrow and the old Padre uniforms that are so ugly, they're still cool. <laughs> That's right. You just you just got the case hit, John. You just you just got the case hit. John Candelaria, woefully off-center. I always loved watching him pitch. He had this really smooth delivery, and he would be kind of three-quarters. It's always fun to watch as a kid. Doc Medic for the Rangers. He looks a little shell-shocked, like, hey, nobody told me we were doing this. I've got to get down to the bullpen. Leave me alone. 
Mike Squire again woefully off center with the awesome white sock collar Brian Downing kind of a smirk look like what are we doing here am I getting paid for this again off center Wow Hall of Famer number three Tom Terrific although there's a little bit of a weird print smudge at the top there upper right seems kind of odd but probably pretty indicative of the run still nice card great picture to your right as he's getting ready to just throw it John Count Montefusco Ben Ogilvy looks like the picture was taken just at dusk Yeah, I miss a lot of these old uniforms, even though some would say that they're, you know, they might be a little tacky, but they work. Little Dwight Evans there. I even like the Oakland, where they have all the yellow. It's just nice. Bobby Mercer. Off cut again, my gosh. Bill Fahey. This guy means business. I hope you don't owe him money because he's going to break your kneecaps. Just saying. Jim Sunberg. And then the gum stain variation is Elliot Maddox. Has a nice left to right gum stain on the back. All right, pack number four. John here at the top. The gum stayed with the wrapper. Yeah, I'm totally slabbing this gum. I just need to figure out if I'm going to go with PSA or BGS, but I'm totally slabbing the gum. Tommy John in a continuing theme of woeful off centeredness. And then my favorite player of this era, or second favorite, Ricky. Ricky loves some Ricky because Ricky can steal some bases. And Ricky can hit the ball. Great uniform, too. Second year mojo right there with Ricky. Al Cohen's not pleased. He's not happy about this at all. Joaquin Andujar. I always loved watching him pitch. More so when he was with the Cardinals. Bob Walk. And what can only be described as a really bad pitcher. Remember his time with the Braves, though. Yeah, Ricky knows some bad centering. Ricky knows some print dots, too. Lee Mazzilli. Rick Honeycutt. With the beautiful old-school powder blue Mariner uniform. They really should go back to wearing that. They'd probably be better off. They'd sell more merchandise. And the Ageless Wonder, Don Sutton. Now what's funny about Don is he pitched, there was some, like in his last couple of years, he was with the Braves for a little bit. And he had like the full jerry curl going. It was nuts. This guy posing like he's doing the little shake weight thing to work his triceps. Or maybe he's in his wind-up, I'm not sure. Here's a classic. And Yaz. And somewhat well-centered Yaz. Not perfect, but really nice. Eric. Solder home. 
again back to the bad centering theme. Mike Norris. Pat Underwood, woefully centered. Here's a fun one, Joe Necro. Those beautiful rainbow jerseys. Roy Howe, sporting quite the mustache, by the way. I assume back then that was a pretty strong look. Bake. McBride, great name, and then of course Mario Mendoza is our gum stain variant, and the uh, person that the Mendoza line is named after. All right, so we're, we're through, let's see, we're through four packs. We're through a ninth of the box, and we already have like a really big stack of cards. Just like in the old days, when golly gosh darn it, the world was a better place. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to get into that old man rant. I don't know if the world was a better place. I think it was just as difficult as it is today. It's just... Everything is so publicized today that we're more aware. I just don't think we were aware of things back then. But anyway, you definitely got more cards for your money. I'll say that. I think we can all agree on that. So, now this pack's interesting. We have, whoa, the gum's really stuck to that card. And Dick Williams is the first in the pack and you can see on the surface there's a lot of wax that has set from the pack from the wrapper onto the card surface so essentially in these for the most part you have I don't know if the light can catch that right to where you can see but you can kind of see where the wax residue is but um, so essentially two cards are ruined in these but again you get 18 so who cares but you didn't Pretty well centered. Jeff Newman looks slightly perturbed. I don't think this is the one with the Pedro error. Maybe the Fernando. I should remember and I don't. Like if you'd asked me this 20 years ago, I could have quoted you line and verse about all of them. Always like the errors back then, but it's been so long, honestly, I forgot. Larry Milburn, a little cross-team action there. Mike Sadik, I have to say I don't really remember him. Most of these players I remember, but especially the National League ones. Bob McClure, very interesting look. I'm going to guess he might have been successful with the ladies back in the day. Joe Malfitano. And what can all be described as a hideous picture. It feels like the surface of all these cards have kind of a grainy, almost wax residue on them. But I know it's not wax. That's probably the coating that they used on the stock. Gary Thomason. Oh, here's one. Well, the mustache of all mustaches right there, Davy Lopes. Goodness gracious. His mustache should have its own card. And then Terry Kennedy, a young, spelt Terry Kennedy. Obviously very early on in his career. With a little off-centering there left to right. Wayne Garland. Pretty interesting look there. Nice, the old school Cleveland uniform. And then Les Spose, Stan Banson. And then good old Jim Fry, manager for the Royals. Looks like somebody's grandpa. Maybe he should be on the 16th tee, cracking open a natty lot, getting ready to tee off. 
and Steve Stone. I saw him pitch a little bit, but obviously anybody that had WGN growing up, you know, remembers him far more as, as Harry Carey's sidekick in the broadcast booth. I always felt like as he got later in his career, he was kind of snarky and bitter, and he seemed a little bit like a tool bag. Uh, I know that's mean to say, but that's just always my impression of him. They seem kind of jerky. I did not enjoy listening to him without Harry Carey. Good picture of him, though. Really good picture of him in his younger years. Let's see. Lenny Randall with the Cubs. Mike Edwards with the A's. I think that's a dupe. Nelson Norman. He's ready to go party right now, I'm just telling you. That beautiful baby blue Ranger uniform. Carlos Lescano with the Cubs. And then the wax stain variation is Dennis Martinez. And that is the wax stain variant. Next pack. And again, we've got the gum stuck to the card. I already see a Hall of Famer in there. One that we have not pulled yet. Gum stays intact. So we have Tony Scott and again. Boy, there's a lot of wax on the front of that. You can kind of see it there in the light. Paul Molitor. Not terribly off center. Nice card though. Steve Renko. Red Sox uniforms just weren't very cool back then. They're pretty look pretty lame in comparison from a color standpoint. Rupert Jones. And a checklist. How awesome is that? The beloved checklist card. Dave Rosema. Not sure the expression there in the whole picture. It's a little bit befuddling. Joe Sambito with the, at the time, beloved Wilson A2000 glove. Oh, here's, here's a classic good old lefty, Steve Carlton. I always loved watching him, my goodness. Boy, he could throw the ball. Bob Welch. Rick Manning, and again, a little off-center, but does it really matter? Yaz. And then back-to-back, -back, Reggie. Well, that's some, that's some Hall of Fame combo right there. Good old Reggie, fall through his swing. Looks like he got all of it. Then Brian Kingman, woefully off center. Oh, here's a fun one. Mark Fiedrich. Yeah, that Reggie is a little off. Well, a lot of these are off. A lot of these are really like it. If we were actually going to grade some of these, I think in what I've opened so far, there's probably two or three cards that that might be worth worth it. Bruce Bochy, how about that? Back in his playing days as a younger man, possibly less volatile, I don't know, in the beautiful rainbow Astro jersey. Al Woods, 
with the Blue Jays. Ron Reed. And then Rowan Office. What a great name. And that is the black stain variation. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think he was in. I know that Gary, uh, Gary's in, Mad Mike's in. Um, I'd have to pull up my list. It's just a handful. It's just a handful of us. Um, of course, Ivan took a, a spot, I think. You got three spots. Uh, Mad Mike took two spots. Gary took a spot. Uh, there was someone that took a brave spot, and then the other day someone bought three spots, and it's someone on Twitter. I forget who it was. I've got their ID where they tweeted at me, but we might do one of these again sometime. Just to, you know, I think these are kind of fun. Just to open older stuff. That's something a little unique. Obviously, we're not going to set a trend in box and group breaking with breaking old 80s material, but I don't really care about that. Well, how about I send that Fidrich to you and you can send it to him? Is he a Tigers guy? Is that his team? And if you trade back and forth with him, I'll send it to you. You can send it. You can just give it to him. Because I don't think he, I don't think anybody took the Tigers in the in the random, not random team selection. I don't think anybody took them. So, and I, I certainly don't need to keep them. I'd rather somebody have them that wanted them. Gum skillfully intact. Terry Poole. Nice wax surface stain. So really, if you wanted to say, we really get two variants per pack. One has a surface stain, and then one has the gum stain. Roy Jackson with a bunch of empty bleachers behind him. Man, the photography in these cards, I mean, I know that they're close to being 40 years old, but they're atrocious. Yeah, I'll send you the, I'll send you the Tigers. And that way you can just, is that, is that Booby Main on Twitter? Is that who you're talking about? Because that's the only person I recall from Twitter that's like a huge Tigers person. Not that I have a, a huge Twitter circle or anything, I don't, but he's really the only person off the top of my head that I remember that's really into the Tigers. Leon Roberts with a, just a total look of disdain and disgust that he's having to stand here while somebody's taking his picture. Killer uniform, though. Oh, Rick Monday. Okay, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Then if it's if it's Booby Main, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, I'll just send him to you. You can send him to him. I, you know, I'd rather him have the cards. He'd like them. They're just going to sit on my shelf. Rennie Stennett. Now, I like the, the the dark Giants uniform like this where it's black with the orange lettering. I thought that was pretty slick. Sal Bando. What a great name. I don't think the... I didn't think there was anything wrong with the... Well, it was the first card in the pack. I'd have to go back and look at it. I'm assuming there's probably some wax on it, some residue of some sort. I didn't... It didn't seem as bad as, like, I really started noticing it when I hit that Dick Williams. Like, he was just like, oh, you run your thumb over it. And it's like, goodness, that's terrible. I'm assuming there's probably a little bit of wax on the Brett, though. But, hey, it's a variation. It's worth a million bucks. Who else has a, a George Brett with, with wax on the surface? Rare variant, that's how, that's what you should call it. Dennis Eckersley, back in his Red Sox days, smidge off center left to right, still a great card, good picture of him.
Tom Underwood. Can't really make out his face there. Now this is off center and it has the old peachy cut on the right side where it's just jagged. I think there should be like a bonus for that. See, I don't, I don't really like the old Red Sox. Like that just doesn't, I don't know. It doesn't do anything for me. I think it's pretty mundane. But that's the yin and yang of it. Mike Heath. Now this is off center and diamond cut. And has the old peachy roughness on the bottom. This is probably the case. This is really the case hit. This is the condition case hit. Diamond cut, off center, and the old peachy rough edge on the bottom. That's a winner right there. Oh, here we go. Sparky. Well, that's a great picture of him, too. That is a really nice card. And it's it's off center. And it's diamond cut, too. You can see the top of the border and the bottom there with the blue. So, And it's got the jagged bottom edge. So we've hit back-to-back -back conditional case hits. How crazy is that? Keith Moreland. Have a really hard time seeing him in a Phillies uniform. Used to him being a Cub. His 87 Tops card is one of my top 10 favorite cards of all time just because of the vibrance of the color in the picture. I used to own a couple hundred of them at one time. I just pick them up from people, trade them and stuff. Nice powder blue uni though for the Phillies. Dave Smith. Or some random person in an Astro uniform. You really can't make out his face that much with the blurry picture. Looks like where you've now got into some consistent diamond cutting on these cards. Yeah, John Stearns again. Like the right side's even, but the left side's diamond cut. That's awesome. Glenn Abbott. Boy, he's got a huge mouth of chew. And, of course, the beautiful Mariner uniform. That's winning right there. Yeah. Yeah, who can get out of out of a pack? What, you know, can you get like a, a, a PSA 2? I would assume those white, those gum stains, I mean, how much does that knock you down? I'm assuming we could pull some fours out of here. I mean, you've got the diamond cut, the rough edge, the stain. Yeah, now that would be awesome. We all divvy up a box of cards, whatever, you know, 80s year. Everybody gets three or four packs, and whoever gets the worst grade wins. Reggie Smith there. Bobby Bonds in his lighter years with the Cardinals. And boy, this is, I mean, I'm going to hold it from the top. Try to hold it straight. But that left border is just, you go down the card and the, and the border gets wider and wider. But then on the right, it looks really uniform. <laughs> you had some issues with the, with the cutting of the sheets. It looks like they cut one side and then something slipped a little bit. And the Cecil Cooper, same way. Nice card, though. Always loved watching Cecil Cooper. And then Glenn Hoffman. Big grin on his face. He's just happy to be here. He's just probably happy to be out of Pawtucket. All right. to bend these a little bit to get that gum to pop off but you don't want to bend them too much this one though boy this one's stuck i think as we get further in the box it's going to be harder and harder to get the gum off the card without tearing the card or cracking the gum <clears throat> and i'd really like to avoid that it's a major mental quirk i don't want to 
I wonder if you sent the card in. Oh, Glenn Hubbard too. That's awesome. Love Glenn Hubbard. So I wonder if you sent the card with the gum on the back, how they would treat that from a grading perspective. And how would they be able to get it in a slab? They'd have to put it in one of those patch card slabs. I tell you what, since I don't, th did anybody take the Braves? I don't think anybody took the Braves. If they didn't, I'm keeping this for myself with the gum intact. And I'm going to see if I can get it graded. I think that would be hilarious. And do they grade the card in the gum? Or do they just grade the card? I feel like I should I should tweet at Steve Sloan and ask him. I might do that later just for fun. He's a good guy. He's got a good sense of humor. I'm sure he'd appreciate the humor in it. He was at Upper Deck when I was at Upper Deck. Good dude. Very sharp. Jim Norris, woefully off center. Big mouth chaw. Good for him. Ooh. Steve Trout. Looking all giddy in his awesome White Sox uniform. Jim Barr. Not too giddy. Junior Kennedy. Dave Bristol. Has that look on his face like he wants to go to the lefty in the bullpen, but doesn't have enough bullpen depth to do it, so he's just going to ride it out and let his starter get shelled for another inning. Doyle Alexander. Larry Parrish. Now there's a card right there. Well, that guy had a beard going too. I love those. Are those the wristbands or the extension of, I guess those are wristbands above his the edge of his batting gloves. Now that's some style right there. That is some style. Like you just don't have that today. I think sometime I want to open like a, like an 85 or 86 box or something where all the players had those wristbands that had the little picture of themselves on it and they're, you know, the big thick wristbands. That's what we need. That's what baseball needs today. Actually, I wouldn't mind having a pair myself. I'd wear them around the office just for the heck of it. Great card. David Chalk. Boy, he's, got ch he's choked up. Guess he's ready to pinch hit. Rick Dempsey. Back in the old Oriole days. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure all those guys just, you know, hate that. I I mean, I, I understand the reasoning behind ESPN and, and, and other networks wanting to do that kind of stuff in game, but I, if I were a manager, I, I would just, I, I would tell them to, you know, just don't even talk to me. Don't even think about it. I don't want to talk to you. We'll talk after the game. That's just me, though. Dennis Kenny in what can only be described as a spectacular baseball outfit. The stirrups, the white pants with the multiple color stripe down the side, the, the brown jersey with again those stripes around the bottom of the armband. Just great. Just utterly great. Don Robinson. Looks like he needs a haircut. I don't recall him being a hippie back in his playing days. Oh, this guy's the man. Look at this. Al Oliver, hat tilted. He's got that look like he's going to hit it wherever he wants to, and there's nothing you can do about it. And back in the day, he was a bad, bad man. But I like the hat tilt. Like, he just doesn't care. And the best part about this, of course, is it is really off-center left or right. Marvis Foley. I wonder if there's any distant relation to Mick Foley. You never know. 
again with their great socks outfit. Don Ase always comes up first in any alphabetical list of players. Ron Toaster Oster with the Reds. Terry Whitfield with the beautiful orange Giants jersey. They should go back to those. And at the end, Jim Slanton. There's no wax variation or gum variation on this one because that was the Hubbard. I'm going to get that slabbed. Yeah, I, I wish they'd stop doing those, those in-game. Uh, it just, it seems like a bit much. You know, there has to be a line somewhere that you don't cross when it comes to that kind of stuff. And they just keep on pushing and pushing and pushing. Like, in, in anything in life, you know, there are limits. And you can't just keep on, you know, are they going to start talking to the pitcher between pitches? You know, are they going to do that? It just seems excessive. Let's see. Miguel DeLone is our gum. Oh, this one seems like it's coming off. Our gum stain variant. Yep, came off clean. And John Castino. Well, yeah, there's some surface wax on. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of surface wax. Gene Michael. I always thought when I was a kid that picture was very creepy for some reason. Just because it's up close and the background's totally black. Dave Rader. Fun card right there. Doug Flynn. Rob Dressler. Had the stash going too. Along with the great baby blue Mariner jersey. Oh, Rick Sutcliffe. He just looks like a kid here. What's funny is he doesn't look like anything during, as he did during his cub years. I always loved watching him as a cub. George Hendrick. Looked like he was about 12 feet tall. Dave Garcia. Grandpa just went and picked up the grandkids. He's going to take them to Chuck E. Cheese for a little bit this afternoon. Then maybe some ice cream on the way home before dropping them off back at their parents' house. Rick Burleson in the classic Red Sox grays. Dennis Worth. Nice little off center there. Steve McCaddy. Wonder if he's baked when they took that picture. Was that a team requirement? You had to have a, a pretty good stash going to be on the team. So it was in direct. Uh, opposition to the Yankees that have a no facial hair policy. I think that's good. It's the yin and the yang. Roy Smalley. He's got kind of a weird look on his face. Like, yeah, I guess I can take a picture. Lynn Cicada. And then Steve Howell. Nice little portrait shot there. Preston Hanna of the Braves, terribly off center. Jerry Naren, catcher. Got kind of an auspicious grin on his face. I do think it's funny how a lot of catchers end up becoming managers. Jerry Royce, back in his heyday. Now this is a nice card right here. Silvio Martinez with the Oscar Gamble starter kit afro. He's not. He's obviously not anywhere in Oscar Gamble's league at this point, but he's getting there. He's trying. You know, he's put forth an effort, and he's you know he has goals in life. Yeah, that's pretty sad about Steve Howell. God, what did he? Did he get suspended like seven times? Was it seven times? 
and they would let him back a year later, and then he'd, he'd fail a test in three months, or that was always jarring. I mean, obviously, and maybe this is just my perspective, but if you if you ever watched at least like two episodes of Miami Vice, you knew better than to mess with cocaine. Like it was just a given. Like don't mess around with cocaine, it will kill you. Like I learned that as a young child watching uh, watching Miami Vice, and I just at that point was dumbfounded that anybody would even think to mess with it. Because you know it it seemed like every other show they showed somebody ODing on it. Of course, I was like, you know, 12 at the time, but at the at that point, it made perfect sense. Shane Raleigh is our gum stain variant. Oh, boy, this has a ton of wax on it. ton of wax. You can kind of see it there across his hat to the other side of the card. Andy Hassler with the wax stain and woefully off-center. All of our cards are off-center where the majority is on the left, too. Bombo Riviera. It's quite a name. Oh, here's a good one. Phil Necro. Looks like he's 85 in this picture. Dick Knowles. Insert your own punchline there. I always, it's funny, this is the only card he's like this everywhere else. It's Dickie Knowles. <clears throat> Mark Littell, got a little bit of a chaw there going. Rick Sofield, Bob Rogers, you know he's just sitting on the couch, he's watching a little TV, <clears throat> pardon me. Looks like he's knocked down about four beers, he's got the rest of the six pack to go. He might go in the back and mow the yard later, he might not, I don't know. Just seems like the look he's got on his face. Ah, oh, Jerry Royster. One of my favorites with the Braves. Greg Mitten. The Giants. Oh, and Steve Stone. 1980 Cy Young, American Cy Young Award winner. Yeah, he died. Phil Necro. I just remember him as a child, like he looked like he was older than my grandpa. And this was in 81. Ah, oh, greatness. And it has a diamond cut. You can see there on the left side. Mike Schmidt has some greatness there. And followed up behind him, Jim Ross. Yeah, they do kind of look like the hats on. They in the circle. Dave McKay. Oh, wow, look. Schmidt, the MVP card. Two Schmidts in one pack. That's some mojo right there. If that's not mojo, I don't know what is. That's mojo rific. Just had to throw that in there just because Ricky Peters woefully diamond cut all around. Manny Trio. Nice action shot. But the color correction is terrible on the photo. Craig Swan. Shane Raleigh, looks like he's ready to rumble, and that is the gum stain variant. Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's got MVP at the bottom, there's not a lot of uh, craziness with it, but I always thought at that time, and again this is the rationalization of a child, but I always enjoyed those because, you know, in this set particular, I think Ricky's got two cards, Schmidt's got two cards, Pete Rose has got three cards. But I always loved that. Obviously, it gives you a chance to pull, you know, more cards. And I never did understand the, 
when price guides started getting into effect, and I'm not even start really talking about Beckett, I'm more talking about like CCP and, and the SCD guide and stuff back in like the late 80s, they had this dumb rule that any subset card was worth half of the base card, which in some instances I kind of get, but like with things like that, like the regular Schmidt and the MVP Schmidt, I just thought that was the biggest pile of BS to where, you know, I think, I don't think that the MVP card's worth just half of the base just because it's not the actual base card. Obviously, people wanted it. It was still Mike Schmidt, but that always just irritated. Even when I worked at Beckett, that irritated me because they still, you know, pre we pretty much had the same standard at that point, and this was like in, in the mid-90s when I was there, and they still followed that. I just don't, I don't get it. All right. See who's got the gum. Hopefully, I, oh, well, this one's on solid. I don't know if I can get the gum off this one. Yeah, this, the gum's not coming. Oh, Lee Lacey. And that, oh, like those. Love the black jersey and the yellow pants. That's just style. I mean, that's styling right there. That's really nice. I'll put that with the Glenn Hubbard. Keith Hernandez. Oh, a very young looking Keith Hernandez during his Cardinal years. Dave Rossello. He might have the uh, Oscar Gamble starter kit going too, looks like. Bill Gullickson. Looks like Andre the Giant. Rennie Martin. Ken Singleton. Baller. Ah, Sweet Lou. Boy, he looks like a kid there, too. My gosh. He looks like a kid. You have to keep in mind, though, in my frame of reference, I, I basically think of anyone under 30 as a kid. That's kind of my age range for that term. Got him a little chew, a little tobacco. John Milner. With the black pants and the yellow jersey. Love that. Bob Baylor. Wayne Nordhagen. And then Don Baylor, who unfortunately passed away recently. Maybe not too recently, it was a couple months ago. Well he looked he looked like a man like a man and a half. Like even I just re, even as a child, I remember seeing him on TV and you know, he would get hit by pitches all the time and you know, he would he would usually end up getting hit by a dozen pitches and you know, he just looked like an indestructible machine. Like he looked like he should be playing football instead of baseball. Tom terrific again. I think he had two cards in the set. Kind of a dark pitcher though. Gets him in the windup though, that's cool. And my favorite player of all time. Dale Murphy. Great card. Great card. Mike Hartgrove. Looks like a scrapper. He looks like one of those guys that might hit you low in a street fight. I'm just saying. He just has that look about him. Oh, well, this has been quite the pack. The kid... Dennis Leonard. Looks like he is somewhat ready to rumble. Yeah, Golkson's leg kick. My gosh. I'm assuming, I, I don't remember from back then, but I'm assuming he was pretty easy to steal on just because of his ginormous leg kick. 
Scott McGregor, he's a pretty good pitcher. Got the collar going. And then Dave Winfield as a Padre. How cool is that? That was a nice pack. We had some star power going there. A lot of star power. Yeah. That's pretty decent. There's some there's some good stuff there. Good, good, good stuff. Well, we got some star power starting off with this one. We'll get the gum. Oh, look at that. Pops. That is some badassery right there. There's no other way. He's got the shades. He's got that old school pirate's cap. He's got it. He's crouched down with his first baseman. He's ready to scoop up anything. And he is the gum variant, variant in the pack as well. Well, it slid right off. So that's our gum variant, the Stargill. And then on the front of the pack, Johnny Bench. And that has a nice little thin layer of wax residue on it. Ed Whitson. Who I believe, if I'm not mistaken, if the story is correct, or maybe I'm mixing it up with another player, learned how to throw a palm ball because he cut his middle finger trying to open a beer bottle. Great orange uniform. Mike Caldwell. When Rimmerswall. I always remember he's a real hard autograph. He's in a handful of early 80s sets and all the graph guys, well, because he's from Holland. And I believe he went back there after his playing days were over. But I just remember, like, a lot of when I was heavy into uh, signed cards a few years ago that, that he was always real tough because as soon as his career was over, he went back to, home to Holland. So it's not like you can just send him some through the mail. I guess you can, but postage from Holland, I imagine, somewhat expensive. Nice card, though. Mickey Klutz. He's just happy to be here. Oh. This was obviously late in his career, but my goodness. Dude's awesome. And, oh, and this is some severe diamond cut, too. Check out the Aussie with the Padres. He's got the sideburns going. That is a horrible diamond cut on that. But it's awesome to see Aussie, though. Tim Foley. Bump wheels. Little top and bottom diamond cut. You never heard of him? I, he was with the Red Sox for, for probably like a season and a half. And then I, the only reason I've heard of him is because the signed card people, you can't, you know, you can't get a signed card of him because he's in Holland. So it's not like he's going to be doing a show appearance or anything like that. So that's the only reason I know about him. Otherwise, I, I'd never heard of him back then. Mike Scott, unfortunately, with the Mets instead of the Astros. Whoa! Rod Carew. The greatness. This has been quite a pack. We've had a lot of star power in this. Ray Knight. Joe Strain. Moose Haas, what a great name. Tom Bergmeier, and he looks really upset. So if you don't give him back that 10 bucks that you owe him, 
he's going to plunk you. Just saying. And Sweet Lou. And then a checklist. And one of Pete Rose's cards in the set. How about that? Good old Pete. Well, we had some, let's see, we had Pete, Lou, Rod Carew, and Ozzy. That's quite a pack. That's some good stuff right there. Quite the pack. Let's see. That's right, Hall of Famer. Rod Carew. I always chuckle when I hear that phrase because, of course, the Andy Sandler song. Oh, well, this pack's starting off good, too. Oh, is this who I think it is with the gum stain? Yep. Billy Martin, excellent. And managerial greatness back to back going to Tommy Lasorda. A little bit of wax there on the front, not too much, just enough to make it fun. John Lamaster, Buck Martinez. Looks woeful, despondent, and sad all at the same time. Bob Stanley. Oh, here we, and this one's not too bad centered. It's got a little rough edge on the right. Reggie. That's a nice look. That's, that's probably as good a condition card as we're going to pull out of this box. It's right edge is a smooth rough, but the centering's fairly okay. Great picture of him, though. Mitchell Page. Ron Jackson. Big old grin on his face. He's ready just to go out and play some ball and have a good time. Maybe kick back a few beers afterwards. I'm gathering it'd be fun to be his, would have been fun to have been his teammate back in the day. Dave Roberts. Jose, can I take you on a sea cruise? Pete Falcone. Dave Heverlow. He looks slightly menacing. He might have killed somebody in Reno. I don't know that for a fact. I'm just saying it's possible. Daryl Thomas. Red Shone Dice. Great coach card. Man, that guy lived a life because even here he looks like he's about 85 and this was in 1981 and he just passed away a while back. My goodness. Hit a great life in baseball, though. Don Money. Gary Allenson. And Ron Davis, who I believe was a closer, but I'm not sure. Look on the back. Uh, you can't really tell. Hmm. I always thought the backs of these were funny where the stat package was not very extensive, but then they had copy, a lot of card copy, career highlights and stuff like that. But it, it seemed like, I will say as an eight-year-old, probably one of the reasons I like this set so much better than Fleer and Tops was because there was more to read on the back about the players. You know, Tops had their little info thing and Fleer was just stats. But there was, you know, these were actually good reading as a child because I never, you know, I rarely saw American League. I saw all the National League because of WTBS and WGN. 
So I like the reading. All right. Yeah. Because, yeah, it has that kind of look where it's the copy of it and you feel like it's a Diamond King. I'm going to take a break for just a second. I'm going to get something to drink and give me about two or three minutes and I'll be right back, John. I didn't realize this was taking so I didn't realize I was rambling on this much. I'm not even halfway through the box yet. But yeah, just give me a couple minutes. I'm just going to step out and get a drink of water and I will be right back. If you have a beverage of your choosing, you might want to grab it. Maybe some popcorn, some beef jerky. I don't know. I don't want to tell you how to live your life. Alrighty, we're back. Yeah, snacks are very important. I'm going to take a picture of something real quick. I'm going to tweet at Steve Sloan, see if they'll grade that, just out of curiosity.
I wonder if they've ever had anybody to submit. There we go. Alrighty, we'll get started here in a sec. John, I'll wait for you to get back in the room. I'm going to tweet a link out to this in case anybody else wants to come in and watch. I did. I tweeted that to, at Steve Sloan, though I took a picture of it, and just asked him if they would grade the card or the guard and the gum. <laughs> I think it'd be funny just to have as a novelty, really, even if it came back as a one or a two, just for the, I think it'd be a nice conversation piece. All right. Do a quick check of my fantasy football team. I'm playing Dalvin and Hobbs this week, and I am getting crushed. Yikes. Of course, to be fair, he was up 21 to nothing before the day started because of Carlos Hyde. And of course, I have Kenny Steele's on my bench. He's put up 12 points. That is misery. Oh, well. It's life. Not the end of the world. All right. On we go. Yeah, totally need snacks, John. I'm glad I ate something right before I went on. I didn't realize this was going to take quite as long, but that's all right. Well, Danny Ainge, I believe that's a rookie card. Oh. 
to refresh my screen here. Okay, so in our next pack, we have a Danny Ainge rookie, and look, it's the gum stain variation. Let's see if the gum will come off. Yeah, that came off pretty easy. We'll set that up there. Lonnie Smith is a filly. Have the sideburns going, though. Got to give him that. Got to give him that. Steve Mako. Boy, he looks kind of... Looks a little perturbed there. Daryl Jackson. Tim Blackwell. Boy, you have quite the stash going, too. Joe Lefebvre. I always pronounce that wrong. Ken Overtfelt. Remember him more as a Brave, but played for the Cardinals before he went to the Braves. Dave Edwards. Again, we've got the team uniform mismatch. John Grubb. Beautiful Rangers outfit. Rusty Cunts. Insert your own punchline there. Rick Miller with the beautiful Opeachy cut at the bottom. I don't know if we can get it on the... It's very frayed. Oh, one of my favorites, Gary Matthews. I always remember him more as a Cub, though, just when he was in the batter's box and he'd be flicking the bat back and forth waiting for the pitch. Guy just was a bundle of energy. Always love watching him play. Always love watching him. Doug Corbett. That kind of looked like he's waving off his catcher, wondering why he asked him to throw the sinker when this situation called for a fastball. Barry Foote. Bobby Maddock. Dave Steeb pre-mustache, very rare. Gary Ward and Don Stanhouse. Sporting quite the stash too. Obviously, it's a big trend back then. Quite a few guys sporting the massive stash. All right. Let's see what we have in our next pack. Doing good with these wrappers. Burnt Campanaris is our gum stain variant. Gum popped right off too. Look at his name too. Dagoberto Blanco Campanaris. Quite a name. And, ah, oh, Royals John Waffen. I love the way they did the position designation. Cat 1-B-O-F. Dan Graham. Rick Wise. Boy, got some diamond cut going on this card. Look at that. Look at that. Grant Jackson. That's quite a wind up there. Nice picture. Jim Kern. The very thin mustache and a crazy beard. Kevin Bell. Looks like he might have retired to become a seventh grade science teacher. Just kind of the look, maybe. Could be wrong. Not that there's anything wrong with being a science teacher. I guess I shouldn't have said science. John, your wife's a science teacher, isn't she? Tom Donahue. 
Mario Soto. Love that. Great picture, too. He had a huge wind-up. Tom Griffin. Larry Heisel. Oh, yes. Bob Horner. The greatness. Hit four home runs in one game. Long-time Atlanta Brave. One of my favorites. Willie Aiken for the Royals with the sweet warm-up jacket. I believe he tested positive once for cocaine, but that's beside the point. Rich Dower, Baltimore Orioles. And Raleigh Fingers. John, you're right. There are a lot of the, the players in the Padre team set in this set. You know, Winfield, Ozzy, Raleigh Fingers. I mean, they had some... They had a team. Be nice if they could have kept some of them. Manny Sanguin. Now this guy. This guy looks like he's ready to party. He's got some wristbands with his number on them. He's taking a little BP. He's got a windbreaker on. Looks like a tank top. Got his gold chain. He's just ready to have a good time. I like that. John Ellis. And then Lamar Johnson. Again, we've got the sweet pick of the jacket with the great White Sox logo. <laughs> you didn't miss much. I opened a couple packs. There was a player that, well, that guy looked like he was a science teacher. And I knew as soon as I said that, I was like, wait a second. John's wife's a science teacher. Maybe I should have made him a history teacher. He just had that teacher look to him, though. And when I say that, I mean from like teachers that we had when we were in school, like when we were in middle school. You could just kind of tell they had the glasses and that kind of distinct vibe to them. I don't know. All my teach, a lot of my teachers did. But somehow I think that that player, once he was retired from baseball, I think it's a safe bet he might have been in a middle school teaching children. messed up that wrapper too so our gum variant here is a manager you can tell by the stat box well this gum's not wanting to come off we might have another grading candidate yep oh bobby cox great manager great manager so i'm gonna have to send somebody has the braves in this break so i'm gonna send these like this one and the the Glenn Hubbard. I actually tweeted at Steve Stone during the or Steve Sloan during the break and took a picture of the back of one of them and asked him if they would grade those and if they would grade the card in the gum or just the card. See, I would love to be in her class because one of the things when I was in school, you know, we learned how to burn sugar and of course that makes just a ton of smoke. I love setting things on fire when I was in science class. That was one of my fun. We'd you know, we, we would make a little makeshift spoon out of aluminum foil, put sugar in it, and then put it over a burner, and it would make just insane amounts of smoke. We love doing that. There's our Tim Corcoran with the pretty thick wax stain on the front. Luis Pujols. Otto Velez. Nice name. Bruce Bochy. The other one. Boy, that has got a ragged bottom. Let's see if I can get it close up here without losing focus. But yeah, you can see the paper trimmings at the bottom of that. That's fantastic. Oh, I always thought that was such a cool card. I never was a huge Phillies fan, but I just thought that that was like a really, like he's just got this look, like, boy, he's in charge, and he's going to like stare at his pitcher until he makes the right pitch kind of thing. It's a great, great picture of Dallas Green. Oh, Steve Garvey. That's like a glamour shot. Oh, 
Obviously, I had the wrong science teacher. I should have had your wife as a science teacher when I was in school. Yeah. <coughs> Tom Herb. The only reason I remember Tommy Herb is because in one season, he drove in more than 100 runs, but hit fewer than 10 home runs, which is really strange. But that Cardinal team had Willie McGee and a couple of other, but, you know, he, he just was driving in a ton of runs. Wasn't really a power hitter. He just made contact, and they had a lot of people getting on base. Ron Hassey, big job, big grin on his face. Ready to play some ball. Fred Norman. Oh, here's one. Amos Otis. Classic. Gary Renicky. Nice one there. Lance Parrish. Good times. Craig Reynolds. Looks a little confused, maybe dumbfounded, didn't know that today was media day. Ernie Witt, <clears throat> and a really terrible pitcher. Tony La Russa, back in his much younger managerial years. And, back to back, Jim Fregosi, with a lot of frame at the bottom. Nice little low peachy cut there. So I'm going to hand some of these cards off so they can be sorted while we open the rest of the box. Because I think my on-air producer might be on the verge of falling asleep. So I think it's hilarious that back in the day, obviously this is a mountain of cards. And even if you paid full retail, it would have been $10.80 before tax. Now again, that's relative to what other things cost. Minimum wage back then. Uh, oh gosh, what was minimum wage in 81? Like three bucks or something like that. So still... $10.80 seems like a deal. Although I never had that kind of money at that age. You know, if I had a dollar, I felt like I was a pretty wealthy man. Like I felt like I was a high roller at that point because I was like eight years old. So if I had a buck, I felt like I was doing pretty well for myself and I was living high on the hog because you could get three packs of cards. And if you went to like a drugstore or you went to like Woolworths or Revco which was bought out by CVS later you know maybe you'd find cello packs which you would get even more cards for your money because the cellos I want to say were like 40 or 45 cents but they had like 28 cards in them then wow like you were just you're the king of the world at that point I don't think this gum's going to come off Oh, wait a sec. Maybe it is. It's kind of wanting to cooperate. Most of it's off, but that one... Oops. Tore a little bit of the stock off. That's the first one of those I've messed up. Tom Pachorik is the gum stain. You can see the little stock tear there. Not bad. I don't think anybody had the Mariners, though. And then on the front, Bobby Mercer with some heavy wax on the... You can see that? Get the light got it there, yeah. Look at all that wax on the surface. Yeah, Fregosi had the hardcore CSI pose. Like, he's going to find that blood spatter, and he's going to put you away for 30, even though you think you're going to get away with it. Steve Nicosa, Jim, whoa, 
obviously something went awry with the printing there because the color on that is blotchy on the left side of his face. Or maybe it's a newly discovered, incredibly rare variant that someone will pay a trillion dollars for. Mad Mike gets that one because he had the Rangers, his beloved Little Red Shoe Rangers, Elliot Maddox, Carney Lansford. Well, that dude could hit some hit some baseballs. Always thought he was underrated. Charlie Lee Brandt. Wow, now this, this is a pitcher and a half. Vita Blue, and look at the kick. Like, he looks like he's about to knee himself in the face. That's nuts. That's, that's some hit. That's some, I think I could steal a base on him. The kick like that. Jerry Augustine, Brewers, looks dazed and very confused. Maybe he had too many greenies in his coffee. John Tudor, early pick. Bobby Brown, OPG edge at the bottom. Pretty well centered, though. It seems like in this last couple run of packs, the centering's been a little better, but we've been getting some frayed edges. That checklist is a nice shape. Dave Roberts. Phil Garner with an excellent hat and mustache. Yeah, that Vita Blue, that was nuts. Looked like he's going to knee himself in the nose. Bill Verdon. Hat slightly askew, arms crossed. Just enjoying a day at the baseball park. Tom Hossman. Mets. All these shadowy pictures. Good gracious. The photo quality certainly was not excellent in this set, for sure. But of course, it was their first go around, so, you know, it's not like they had a, you know, they weren't used to doing it. I would love to know the production run, though, that the companies had back in the 80s. See if I can keep this wrapper intact without tearing it to bits. Oh, yeah, I got it. Perfectly separated wrapper. Let's see who are. And our gum stain variation is Ted Cox. Hey, you can hear that popping off the back when you just fold the card a little bit. Came off smooth, though. I feel like someone on the that, that's big into the PSA set registry should get a complete set of the cards with the wax stains and then get them graded and have them all grayed out at like four or five. And then have a, a complete wax stain registry set. If I had obscene amounts of money, I would do that just for the heck of it. You can see the wax build up on that card on the front. Fred Stanley. Tommy Boggs. Looks like he might be half-heartedly taking batting practice. Mark Wagner. Oh, and here we go with some greatness. Nolan. Off-center. And diamond cut off center top to bottom, and then you can see that left border where it gets bigger as it tapers down. Boy, that's some greatness right there. Barry Bonnell again, diamond cut off center all at the same time. Sparky Lyle. Well, now that is a that is a pretty uniform diamond cut on the top and the bottom with the top frayed. So that is the holy trinity of card uh, printing production issues all in one card. Ray Burris. Jim Cott. 
pitched for like 800 years. Pete Redfern, what a great name, Redfern. Bruce Suter, loved watching him work. Watched him as a Cub and a Brave. Bobby Clark, Larry Bradford, like the straight leg out. Mike Proley, the Cobra. That's pretty well centered too. The co loved watching him. My goodness, it's a pretty nice card too. A little cheapy on the top border, but centered well. Richie Hebner, Bill Robinson, and Joey McLaughlin. Looks like he might be stoned, possibly. Just has that look to him. How's your fantasy team doing today, John? You making any headway? Or are you getting steamrolled like I am? saved my wrappers when I was a kid. At one point I had a huge collection of them. A fun fact about wax wrappers is if you collect enough of them and you kind of bind them up and wind them up together and you have like lamp oil, you can essentially use the wound up wrappers as a wick to burn lamp oil. Don't ask me how I know that. I just do. I was often very bored as a child. I think that's probably what happened to most of my wax wrappers that I saved as I ended up doing that. If you like playing with fire, they come in really handy. Yeah, this one's stuck. Dave Revering. Gum attached. I like to think of that as a value add. There's Rick Honeycutt with, you can see the wax there on the front. Don Sutton again. John Fulgham. Joe, Joe, Joe there. Rookie of the Year, I believe. And a, another Yaz. So that's three Yazes we pulled out of this box. I looked at my fantasy a little while ago. I was down by like 30. That's all right. This is the first year I've played fantasy since the season where Vic broke his leg in the preseason. I haven't played fantasy since then. Because I was with a, uh, playing on a, a team and we had the first pick and we took Vic and he broke his leg like literally three days later and I swore off fantasy sports forever. And this is the first season I've played since then. Eric Soderholm, guy means business. Mike Norris, this guy could pitch. Pat Underwood. Joe Necro again. Roy Howe and his massive mustache. Bake McBride and Search on Punchline. Mario Mendoza, that's a dupe. Oh, here's one. Bill Russell. How about that? Bill Russell. Bob Forsh. Big Mouth of Chew. Sid Monge. I think it's Monge or is it Monge? Tommy Hutton. Oh, Craig Nettles.
Yeah, we're doing well. That's the third yaz we've hit. See who our gum variant is, Rodney Scott. Let's see if I can get the yeah, that one's popping off pretty clean. I'll tell you, I'm gonna make a fortune when I get all these pieces of gum graded. Sell the tins for like a couple hundred bucks. It'll be fantastic. So that's our gum variant. And then John Mayberry, see if I can, t yeah, look at all that wax right on the front. That's pretty heavy wax. Ross Baumgarten. Ed Halicki. Oh, George Foster. That dude could crush the ball. Crush it. Why do you need a clean brat? You've got the big very you've got the wax variation. That's far more scarce than just a clean one. Like the wax, the wax on the surface, that's the rare variation. That's like a case hit. Gene Garber loved watching him pitch. Of the Braves. Andre Thornton. John Tamargo. the quiz legend I always wanted to pitch submarine when I was in little league because of him Mike Flanagan he had a big leg kick too I bet Ricky stole some bases on him more than once Gene Richards Eddie Solomon, Richie Sisk, Ed Farmer. I just I love those old white sock uniforms with the blue pants and the white jerseys. That was that was great. Dave Frost, Doug Bear, let's see Bill North, and Luis Gomez. We're starting to make some headway in this box. I think we're past the halfway point. Yeah, maybe uh, that that could be it. I mean, if there's probably something to be said if you're trying to generate that much force with your your delivery, and you're not using a full windup. Maybe that is. You're putting too much stress on your shoulder and on your elbow instead of using the momentum of your body and the full windup and getting a good kick. You know, the whole mechanic of that. Probably so. I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt that for a second. Here's our gum variation. Mike Davis. Pretty well centered. Let's see if we can get this gum off. Ooh, I don't know. This one doesn't. Yeah, this one's not going to cooperate. It's too stuck on there. So we'll put that in the gum pile. Don Ossie. Let's see if he's got. Yeah, he's got some wax residue there on the top. Ron Oster. Terry Whitfield again. I believe that's a dupe. Jim Slanton. Glenn Mother Hubbard. And look, another brat, woefully off center though. So you have the wax variation and the extremely off center variation. And then again, right behind it, just like the last time, Eddie Murray. And again, he's off center, left to right as well. Steve Murrow, the Candy Man. 
I feel like this is the same exact pack. Doc Medic, and he's got the same kind of color issue. It looks like the plate's bad, or the ink is bad on the card, because you can see the two-tone from his right sleeve. That's pretty weird. Ultra rare variation worth a trillion dollars. Squire, this card is the same way. Look at the left border, look at the right border. It's not it's not the angle I'm holding the card, that's just how it's colored. So they had some ink and plate issues. Brian Downing. Oh. And and that's pretty well centered too. But it's got that same print flaw that the last one. Do you remember that we pulled the Seaver like in the third or fourth pack? Same card. He's in the he's in the big wind up. Getting ready just to roar the ball. And there's that little ink spot on the top. Had the same thing on the other one. Hmm. Count Juan Fusco. Ben Ogilvy. Well, he was quite a combo with Cecil Cooper back in the day. And Dwight Evans. So the gum stain card is Dennis Lamp. Let's see if the gum will come off. Yep. I don't want to brag, but I think I've done a fantastic job keeping the gum intact. And I've only torn one card, taking it off. Bob Boone with see, yeah, oh my gosh. That's got a lot of, let's see if I can get tilted right to show the wax a little bit. Steve Dillard, Kiko Garcia, Mickey Hatcher. Oh, and the big, big money card of the box, Tim Raines rookie, slightly off center left to right. Well, look how he looks like. Man, he looks like such a little kid there. Like, he does not look like an adult in that picture. He looks like some 15, 16 year old kid. So, this goes to Mad Mike since he wanted the Expos as a second team. Pretty crazy. Nice little card there. Halabowski, the Mad Hungarian. Now, I love this because the border. Is purple when the, all the other Braves cards the little border is blue. But it's like that on all of them. Lynn McLaughlin. That glove looks like it's twice as big as his dang head. It looks like a big old softball glove. Or maybe he's just a tiny guy. Randy Lurch, a big again with the big leg kick. Well these guys weren't messing around. Maybe that's why Bill, Ricky got all those steals. Bill Caudle. Greg Gross. Steve Kemp. Off cut so bad they almost cut his name off the bottom. Well, he looks peeved. Like he's ready to whoop somebody. Don't mess with him. Just saying. Burn Rule. Again. Cutting the border close at the bottom. Tug McGraw. Mick Keller. I have to say I'm not a fan of those Cub Unis. The blue like that. I just don't like them. Broderick Perkins. Well, no, that's a uniform right there. Yellow top to bottom with the brown lettering. And, now check this out. Yeah. Just going to let that speak for itself. Quack. 
quite the combo. Quite the combo. And a bevy of coffee on the back. Best hitters in baseball. You better believe it. Roger Erickson. And Rick Ruschel. Ruschel. In his younger days as a Cub. Pretty cool. Pretty cool to see. Alright. Yeah. How about that? Great card. I was wondering if the crackling sound came through on the mic when I did that, when it popped them. It makes a nice little sound. Mike Phillips. Carrie Alexander. Oh, yes. Well, this is a nice copy, too. That's pretty well centered. The Hawk. That is fantastic. Loved, loved watching him on the Cubs. Just absolutely loved it. And it was great to watch him in the field if he'd get something hit to him sometimes. He had a, had a rifle of an arm. Had a rifle of an arm too. I have to say I always loved him when I worked at the card companies especially at Donruss, because we would use him a lot because he would sign. Compared to other Hall of Famers, he was relatively affordable. So we used him, all, you know, we might get him to sign 10,000 stickers in a year because he was he would sign at a reasonable rate and people would stay, you know, pay money for his, his autographed cards. But I always liked him. Clint Hurdle, got him a little chaw there. Benny Ayala, Tom Brickens, Joe again, Joe Morgan, Bob Davis, Leo Sutherland. I feel like we're getting a repeat pack here. Dan Ford, Jeff Burroughs. Oh, here's a new one. Gary Templeton, who was traded for Ozzy. He had a pretty good career, but nothing like what Ozzy did. Tom Verizer. Spaceman Bill Lee. Oh, here we go. Look at that. Now that's a card right there. That is a card. Willie Wilson. John Lowenstein. And... Babyface Alan Trammell. Gosh, him and, and Lou both, gosh, they were just kids back then. That is nuts. Yeah, the Expos are, uh, Expos are doing well on this. I feel like, though, overall as the box, it's been pretty darn good. Like, we've hit, what, 30 Hall of Famers out of this? I mean, there's been a lot of, you know, it's not like we're just pulling commons. I mean, we've pulled a lot of stars and... I haven't opened one of these boxes probably in 15 years, so I have to say I just enjoy opening it because, again, this was uh, the product that kind of, you know, I had bought cards before, but this is where I got kind of serious about it and the concept of putting a complete set together and that sort of thing kind of, this is where I got a little more serious about it. So it has a, a near and dear place in my heart and always will. Even though I know when you compare it to other 80 sets from a value perspective, it's like the redheaded uh, stepchild to you know all the, the 
bigger sets with better rookie cards and stuff like that. But it'll always be a, a you know, very meaningful to me. And this one's stuck. It's not, this one's not coming off. So Lee Mazzilli keeps the gum. Keeping the gum. Now we got an Eck here on top. See if I can, yeah, look at all that wax there. Underwood with a terrible picture. Mike Heath. Oh, here comes Sparky again. Boy, that's just a great, I mean, that is a, I'm not necessarily a Tigers fan or anything, but that is a fantastic card. That's a card and a half. That is a card and a half. Great picture of Sparky. Keith Moreland, Dave Smith, John Stearns, Glenn Abbott. Well, look, he's got, he has got about half a bag of red man in his mouth. Reggie Smith, Bobby Bonds. Oh, there you go, Cecil Cooper. Glenn Hoffman, Tommy John, and Ricky. Ricky loves some Ricky. Loves some Ricky. Everybody loves some Ricky, though. Al Cohen's and Joaquin Andujar. And Bob Walk. Uh oh, my mountain of wax wrappers just took a tumble. show you real quick Marvis Foley with the print defect purple on the left border blue on the right let's see if the gum comes off oh this is this is like the holy grail of variations so the the left like eighth of the card the colors messed up and the gum won't come off the back or will it let's see oh obviously i didn't try hard enough and it did and first card gary with a lot of wax too. Dennis Leonard. Scott McGregor. Oh, Dave Winfield. That guy could hit the ball. Lee Lacey. Another color. Yeah, you can see where that's kind of messed up on the right side. Steve Trout, Jim Barr, Junior Kennedy, Dave Bristol, again, Doyle Alexander, again, Larry Parrish, Dave Chalk, these are all dupes, Rick Dempsey, Dennis Kenny, Don Robinson, and Al Oliver, and he's got the color. It seems like it's all the Rangers, so something on that portion of the sheet just went awry. Hmm.
perfect. And Jim Lentine, terrible off center too, and diamond cut. That's just a terrible cut card. This might be the worst cut card in the box. And it has a gum stain on the back. I would love to know how that would be graded though, just out of auto curiosity. Like, is that a three? Is it a five? I mean, the corners technically are sharp, but the borders are, are diamond cut on all four sides. But the, the corners are good. There's no rounding or anything. The corners are intact. The borders are terrible. The back has a ginormous gum stain. I just wonder how that would grade. Dick Davis. Whoa, look at that. Yeah, look at the wax residue on the front of that. Ken Maka. David Ford, John Verhoeven, Ron LaFleur, well that dude could burn, he could steal some bases, George Riley, off center, Pat Kelly, Oh, Pete Rose, woefully diamond cut, but it's still Pete Rose. And, looky, oh, that's well centered too. Well, 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 look at that. MVP card number two. Now, isn't that nice? So, I feel like you've done pretty decent in this, John. From a, from a Brett standpoint, you've done pretty well. You have the Wax variant. You have the OC variant. We've got a couple of MVPs. So, And then you got the combo with Carew. Not too shabby. Jim Essien, don't mess with him either. Boy, he looks pretty rough. Larry Bittner. John Gorgel. He looks creepy, I'm not going to lie. Keith Smith. Dick Tidrow, again. Crazy leg kick. And a Fu Manchu that should probably have its own series of trading cards. Now that's something. Bob Owachinko. The big blotch down there by the P. Mookie! Mookie Wilson. Mets. De Capilla. And Ilya Sosa. Let me hand this stack of cards. Yeah, that, I mean, that should have not only its own card, but its own series of cards. That's pretty epic. It's pretty crazy. All right. No, Eric didn't. He, he didn't buy into it. I thought he might just for the sheer heck of it, uh, but he did not. He may he, he may not be into breaks. I don't know. I've never seen him really say much about it, but I figured when I posted it that he might buy a spot into it just because. I was kind of hoping he would just because I feared he might join the chat and, you know, if there were a bunch of us in here, it would make for an entertaining time since obviously we're all middle-aged guys that grew up with this stuff. Wow, Pete Rose, the up-close portrait shot with the gum. Let's see if the gum comes off. There we go. Beautiful gum stain. Off center, of course.
Yeah, I thought he might just because of what, you know, 81 Donruss. I thought he might have been tempted to just, you know, again for the heck of it. George Hendrick with a lot of wax. Well, I'm sure I'll probably do one at some point. Again, we'll do, you know, for some reason, and I don't know why, but I would like to do like a an 83 or an 84 Fleer Cello box. I would do 85s, but they're pretty expensive. Like, I don't want to spend, I don't necessarily want to break a $200 box. But I think you can get 83 Fleer Cellos for like 90 or 100. I would totally do that. Just because, you know, for the fun of it. Here's an Aussie. Little diamond cut, but still, great to see Aussie. Yeah, I feel like they almost should have the gum stain. I think that should carry a premium. You know, like the old uh, multiplier. You know, it should. There should be like a. It sh they should be valued at one point two five x if they've got a gum stain on the back. Steve Howell with the rough OPG cut bottom. Preston Hanna. Naren again. Harry Rose. There's Silvio again. The starter kit going. Miguel DeLone. Well, Dick Williams, he looks like the high school principal. And he is going to blister your backside when you get to call to his office. Because he has had it with your shenanigans. And he's got the paddle ready. Don't, don't mess with him. Bucky Dent. And Jeff Newman. Yeah, 84 would be good, but well, that's pricey. I don't even know what a box goes for nowadays. I'm assuming it's two or two fifty, maybe, maybe more, maybe more than that. I don't know. I mean, I would like to do the 84, but that is a bit much. That is a bit out of my budget, and I don't honestly. And I'm not saying it's being pessimistic. I think it's just how it is. I don't know if you would get somebody to fill all the spots. Like, we didn't fill all the spots for this, but frankly, I didn't care because it's a $60 box, and I don't mind paying the rest of whatever's not covered. But on something like that, yeah, I was, uh, well, I don't think the gum's coming off this. Yeah, this isn't a Sal Bando gum variant. Put that over in our little gum variant stack. Let's see, Foley. See the wax. That's got some thick wax. Yeah. Bum wheels. Mike Scott. Hey! Rod Carew. Excellent. Oh, did he? They did the 84 box. I watch him from time to time. His graphics, do, does him or his wife, or do they do like graphic arts professionally, like as their real life job? The only reason I say that is their graphics are fantastic. Like, I don't think anybody breaking has the type of graphic presentation that they have. Like, it's really good. Like, it looks like it was professionally done. That's the only reason I ask. Give me a second. got to plug in my phone. My battery's done. But their graphics just look really just spectacular. I just assume one of them may have done that. Yeah, that would be harsh to go to the expense of... of getting that box and not hitting them annually. That would really, really not be good.
All right. Sorry, I just had to plug my phone up and run the juice out of it. Joe Mild Hip Flexor Strain. Moose Hoss. Tom Bergmeyer. Again, he's furious. Still furious. Lupinella. Checklist. All again. Pete Rose. Backed up by Willie Stargell. Love that card. Terry Poole. Roy Jackson. Leon Roberts. Rick Monday. And Rennie Stinnett. All right. Let's see how much we've got. Oh, my gosh. We only have eight packs left. The end of the tunnel was a pause. I'm going to get a quick drink. So he did used to work. Okay, well that that makes sense. I was just I was just curious. I wasn't trying to be nosy about their business. I just their graphics look so. I mean, that's not something that you know some amateur could open up a computer program and put together. It just seemed like it was professionally done. It looks really good. I have to say I'm super envious, but it, their presentation looks really nice from from that standpoint. I watch everybody else that breaks. Yeah, that gum stack is pretty, uh, you know, there's, I think we've got seven or eight cards where they stuck to the card and the rest of it's there, so. I feel like I should slab some of that just because I think it'd be hilarious. I'm going to check my Twitter feed real quick and see if, see if Steve Slime tweeted back at me. No reply yet. I'm sure he'll have some sort of funny retort. He's got a good sense of humor. All right, back to it. This might be the longest single box break of all time. Yeah, shoot, this wax wrapper's not wanting to, it's tearing. Gum car Rick Sutcliffe. Let's see if we can get the gum to pop off. All right. Ron Jackson. Dave Roberts. Jose, can I take you on a sea cruise? It's one of the few Chris Berman names I actually like. I always thought it was funny. Pete Falcone. Dave Heverlow. Daryl Thomas. Red Sean Dice. Sean Dice. Don Eddie Money. Gary Allenson. Ron Davis. Billy, awesome to see Billy, John Castino, Gene Michael with the creepy picture, Dave Rader, Doug Flynn, and Rob Dressler. Oh. All right.
So what's funny on this wrapper, can you see that? One stick of gum, net weight, one eighth ounce, 3.54 grams. So they actually have the weight of the gum on the wrapper. I'm assuming there's some sort of FDA ruling or something that has to do with that as far as having to uh, communicate the proper weight of the item or the net weight of the item. Just a guess. And the gun card is Willie Norwood. I think that's the first time we pulled this card in the box. Well, that piece came off super easy. Willie Norwood. Yeah. Yeah, Andy would, yeah, he would... He was like, I can't believe someone actually paid money to send this to us. But, again, you only live once. You might as well have a little fun. And, I honestly, I'd be really curious how they treated it. I think maybe I should send one to BGS and I should send one to PSA and just see how each of them treat it. Oh, it's got a lot of wax on the front. Ah, uh, yes. UL Washington. The only disappointment with this card is, does he have, yeah, he does have the toothpick, but you can barely see it. Now, you, I distinctly, for whatever reason, remember his 85 FLIR card is awesome because you can really see, uh, you can really see the toothpick a lot more prominently. And I always thought that was hilarious. Mark Bellinger. Now, it looks like this is a fresh pack, whereas all these cards we haven't seen yet. And then... 1980 Cy Young, Steve Carlton. Awesome. Rob Wilfong. Don't think we've seen him yet. Daryl Porter. Pictured as a Royal, but Cardinals on the card. Bo Diaz. Passed away very young. Side note, his signed cards incredibly tough to find. I don't know if it was just because he died so young or if it's a combination of the fact that he died so young and was a tough signer even when he was around. But a lot of signed set collectors, you know, he's one of the last two cards they need to finish their set on a lot of different sets in the 80s. Butch Weininger. Bert Hooten and King Kong, Dave Kingman. Ken Landro. Well, look at those lamb chops. He looks young here, too, not quite when he was with the Dodgers later. Jim Dwyer. Willie Hernandez. Oh. Gaylord Perry with the Yankees. How great is that? I once saw him autograph a Vaseline container at a card show. Somebody brought, you know, he was an autograph guest and he was signing baseballs and stuff and somebody actually brought up a container of Vaseline, and he signed it. I thought it was hilarious. I could, it was like such a, it was one of those things that you couldn't believe you were seeing it at the time. And this was, gosh, this was like in the late 90s. It was hilarious, though. He seemed to be a really good sport about it, too. I've seen him at a couple shows. I've never had anything graphed by him, but just seeing him and seeing how he interacts with people or interacted with people, he was just a really... Like he was, you could tell that if I were a show promoter, I would want him to come to my show just because he was just a, a you know, he was really good with the people and, and engaging and everybody seemed to really enjoy being around him. Checklist, Mike Cubbage and Rance Molnix. 
Yeah, this was a totally fresh pack. I don't think any of the cards that we had in this pack we had seen yet. All right. Hopefully we'll get another one of those packs where it's cards that... I know that there's still several that we haven't seen in the box, but it seems like there have been some that we've seen two or three times. see who the gum car did. Oh! Ozzie Smith. Now it's got a little stain down here. It's got a... Now this is nuts. I don't know if you can see. Let me try to angle. If you look at the bottom left corner, there's a little blue mark and on the... and instantly you think maybe it's like ink or something. But what it is is it's part of the cut. There's a little on the sheet there's probably a little like blue cross and it's where they line up the blades to cut the sheets and it looks like they've got part of it if these were cut without with the borders cut out uh, it looks like they may have missed that but it's you know there's a diamond pretty bad diamond cut hold it right where you can see it real good but yeah and you can tell it's diamond cut the other way on the right. And I'm wondering, should I leave the gum on? Or should I take it off? I don't think the gum's coming off. Yeah, it's not coming off. Maybe we should grade the Aussie since it's a Hall of Famer. Mario Soto's on the front. And look at all that blacks on the front. Griffin. Nice little big bad Bob Horner. Willie Akins. Rich Dower. Dower. Raleigh again. Manny Sanguine. Ready to have a good time. John Ellis, Lamar Johnson, Bert Campanaris, and Johnny Bench. Boom. Big hit. Congrats, Reds. <laughs> Ed Whitson. I feel like I should do that the next time we hit a Hall of Famer. I'm just going to start screaming and going nuts. Mike Caldwell, Wynn Rimmerswall, native of Holland, tough graph. I don't want to mention any names, but I was watching a break last night, and they hit a, somebody was, they were, they were opening XR football, and they hit a really nice one of one, like a rookie triple patch auto, something along those lines. It's a really good card. And the person that pulled it yelled so loud and was creating such a ruckus that I had to turn the volume down on my TV from 18 to 8. Like you'd have thought that they'd either been shot and were on the verge of dying or that they had hit Powerball. And I was just like, you know, I understand being excited and I get excited when I pull something big, just like we all do, but good gosh almighty. I think I was worried that my neighbors might have heard it. It was blaring so loud. Luis Chant. It, I, I'm not a Red Sox fan necessarily, but it, it weirds me out seeing him in a Yankees uniform. I'm not going to lie. It kind of weirds me out. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Yeah, hopefully I don't do that. I will say I got a little excited last night that I didn't scream and yell, but I opened a box of of uh, 18 Gold Rush Hall of Fame autographed jersey. It's a product that uh, Steel City Collectibles puts out. It's you know it's basically prepackaged um, autographed jersey, and they're all authenticated and everything. And it's basically a product made for breakers. And I get it, and still spots in it. And I opened a, a broke a box of it, and we pulled the Montana which obviously is one of the better ones to get on the checklist. And I was, you know, 
that was for us because we don't break a ton of stuff it's not like i'm breaking 20 cases a week here like a lot of folks you know we end up breaking three or four boxes a week and so that was really really nice like i was really excited i mean i didn't yell and scream but i'm sure i yammered on about it for a good three or four minutes after we opened the box just because you know on our scale of opening that's a big deal for some folks it might not be but for us it was Mike Hartgrove with the printing imperfection in the bottom left. Let's see if they get. Oh. Yeah, I think this will. Uh, oh. Yeah. I didn't think that gun was going to come off. Or I thought it might tear the paper. Some of those pops sounded a little too loud. Craig Reynolds with. The wax there. Ernie Witt. Another Tony LaRussa. Followed up by Jim Fergosi. Don't mess with him, just saying. Followed up by Bobby Cox. A little managing trifecta there, back to back to back. Keith Hernandez in his young and rebellious days as a St. Louis Cardinal. Dave Rossello. Bill Golkson. The big leg kick, Rennie Martin. I think you're on something about the big leg kick because these guys back in the 80s, they didn't go on the DL every two months. And they would throw, I mean, how many, you know, they'd throw 260, 270 innings a season. And they would have records like 18 and 14. They'd go deep into the games. And, you know, and they seemed to be all right. And they had long careers too. It wasn't like they pitched for four years and then their arms fell apart. So I think you're totally on to something. They need to go back up to the full windup, quit pitching out of the stretch, go back to the full windup, and just let it rip. Ken Singleton. Oh, that is an awesome card. Lou looks like he's about 12 years old. Of course, he'd just been a major leaguer for, when was his rookie card year, 79? John Milner. Understudy to Pops, obviously. Same, they even have the same baseball card pose. Bob Baylor with the printing imperfection on the right side of the card. Wayne Nordhagen. Big, bad Bob Baylor. At one time, might have been the baddest man on the planet. Not sure, but I think it's possible. And then... Tom Terrific, and the greatness of Dale Murphy. Words cannot express how bitter I am that he is not in the Hall of Fame. I think it's a travesty, uh, and frankly, I think it makes the Hall of Fame seem like a bit of a joke that he's not in. The most dominant player uh, in the early to mid-80s, without a doubt, but yet not a Hall of Famer. Incredibly disappointing. All right, we are down to our final four packs. Final. So how do you feel if you hate the Yankee box cards? How do you feel about the Rays box cards? Because I feel like that's even a step further down. Like I know that he lived in Tampa and all that stuff. But I feel like at that point, like it just, I don't know. It seems really unsavory. I never, I always winced when I saw Boggs in a checklist. And he's with the Rays. It just really, I don't want to say it offended me, but it made me really queasy. Tom Donahue is our gum variant, the rare right to left placement of the gum on the card. I don't know if this one's going to, yeah, I don't know if this one's going to come off. It seems pretty stuck. We're just going to leave it be there. So, 
Gary Ward with the heavy wax on the front there. I think we might have some new cards here. Caesar Geronimo and our second Tim Raines rookie. Moderately centered, not too bad. Probably 60 40 left to right. Top to bottom is a little diamond cut on the bottom, but still. Gosh, he looks young there too. It just, I know I said that the last time, but it just blows my mind. So we're on fire. We've hit two Tim Raines rookie cards in this box of 81 Donners. I feel like I should go crazy or something since we hit that second one. Dave Frost. Doug Bear. Just the sound of these, the way these cards when I'm shuffle them, like you can tell there's something on the like something that's kind of gritty on the surface. They definitely has a distinct feel. Bill North. And they don't smell as good as they used to in the year of issue, I'm just saying. Luis Gomez. Rodney Scott. John Watham. Dan Graham, Rick Wise, Grant Jackson, Jim Kern, and Kevin Bell. This is the guy that I said I believe when he retired he was going to become a seventh grade science teacher. He just kind of has that look about him. I could easily, I could have easily seen him being you or, or my science teacher in middle school. I think that could have happened. So when you open that stadium club, did they stick together? That's the thing I always worry about. That I love the smell of that UV coating, though. I know exactly what you're talking about. That that really, really rich UV coating smell, and it's it's. You know, it's kind of like eight. It's kind of like ninety-two ultra baseball, but it, it's distinct. But it's they both have really rich aromas to them. Now, did the cards stick though? Because that's always been my concern. I know that like ninety-two Stadium Club and ninety-three Stadium Club, if they spend any time in heat, they will brick. Like you, 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 they'll brick, and when you open the pack, like you have to really flex them hard to get them to separate, and sometimes you can't even do that. I'll show you an example here in a few minutes of cards that do that. I've got some, I have some, I, don't ask me why I have these, but I have some 16 optic baseball value packs, and they're the same way. They just, they brick hard. It takes a while just to work them apart. I didn't know if the 91 Stadium Club did that, or if maybe it was a box that had been kept out of heat. Mitchell Page is our gum variant. This gum's coming off. There we go. Carney Lansford. Oh my gosh, the wax on that's nuts. Look at all that. It's all over the card. Charlie Liebrandt. Vita Blue with some damage at the top. How did that happen? You can see the kind of indention there. Hmm. Jerry Augustine, a young John Tudor, Bobby Brown yet again. I think that's the third time we've hit him this box. Checklist. Dave Roberts, Phil Garner with the stash and the awesome hat. Bill Verdon, going to Chuck E. Cheese to pick up the grandkids. Tom Houseman, Tom Pichorek, oh yeah, Tommy Lasorda, boom, John LeMaster, Buck Martinez, Bob Stanley, and 
Reggie again. How great is that? I think this is the third Reggie we've pulled out of this box. Awesome. Down to our next to last pack. Yeah, I think the Ultra Brick's real bad. But I have to tell you, I love that 92 just for the smell of the UV coating. And I did, I think at the time I was, let's see, 92, I would have, that would have been during my freshman year of college. So I opened, a, you know, by that point I was setting up at shows and I had a little money in my pocket. So I actually, I'm sure I opened probably a couple boxes of Series 1 and a couple boxes of Series 2 at the time. But definitely had a wonderful aroma about it, though. Lance Parrish. I think that's a new card for us. And he is the wax stain variant. Let's, or the gum stain variant. Whoa, this is not coming off. Or is it? It seems on there pretty solid. But yeah, I loved the 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 smell of 92, plus the way they slid the coating was real smooth. And if you had a stack of them in your hands and you were sorting them, they would just basically slide out of your hand. It's really nice. I have to say though, since we're talking about aroma of cards. In my book, this gum is not coming off, by the way. In my, my book, number one is 91-92 Upper Deck Basketball. Best, and it didn't have any UV coating on it. It was just a straight stock, but I don't know where they sourced that stock. But as far as card smells go, it's the most heavenly smell ever created. And I will say that to my dying day. Just nothing beats it. It's just fantastic. I don't know when today, like if you bought a case or you bought a box, if they would have that same smell today. I don't know if it's dis if it dissipates over the years because I haven't opened any of it in a really long time. But I would be tempted to open a box just to see if the stock smelled the same as it did in 91. But in my book, that's the top. Top one. And then 92 Ultra would be second just because of the UV coating, which is fantastic. If they had that in like an aerosol spray can, I would spray this room with it. I think these are all dupes that we've already had before. Oh, there's that awesome, I love that Dallas screen card. I don't know why, but I do. That's just an awesome card. Steve Garvey. In his glamour shot, Tom Herr, Hassey, Fred Norman, Amos Otis, and Gary Renicky. He looks like he's a, like the grown-up version of one of the Bad News Bears. And the last pack. In our marathon box break of 81 Donners baseball. No, football was good too. It was definitely the the, uh, the the 91 football was really good. It just wasn't quite exactly the same as the basketball. But yeah, I definitely like top 10 material. So I, I wouldn't dispute that at all. I wouldn't argue that at all. Open. A little bit of it opened a ton of the basketball though because of Matumbo and Larry Johnson. All right, last pack. We'll flip over to our mountain of wrappers. Uh huh, epic. And then our little pile of gum. And our last gum card, Glenn Adams. I don't think we've seen him today. I don't think we've seen this card. See if we can pop the gum off. Let's see. Yeah, it's just not, it's not going to come off. 
I don't want to tear the card. We'll put that in our our gun card stack. So this might be a new Jose Morales. I think this is a new yeah, Terry Crowley. Scott Thompson. Yeah, Jerry Kuzman. New pack. Last pack did. Bill Stein. Jerry Martin. Hoskin Powell. He looks a little perturbed. Tony Bizzard. I know I mispronounced that. Oh, Larry Gura. Oh, classic. Jim Palmer. Yeah. Great card. I always love that card. Bill Butner. Danny Goodwin. Hey, hey, Joe Torrey, manager of the Mets. Pretty cool. Juan Beniquez. Sal Butera. Butch Hobson. And our last card is Mike Vale with the Cubs uniform and the red team designation. Well, all righty. That is all. That's it. That's all 36 packs, 648 cards. We've got, as you can see, a pretty righteous stack of gum there, some of which will be sent off to be graded. And we have a nice stack of gum cards where the gum would not come off the cards, so we left them. I think we should prob we'll should probably end up sending one or those, two of those in to get graded just because... What the heck? Why not? I'm curious to see how they handle it. Uh, they'll probably refuse to grade it, but you never know. I mean, it's a legitimate card, so technically they should grade it. But uh, that is about it. John, I certainly appreciate you joining me for this whole time. I really do because it, it's a lot easier to get through a break if you've got somebody talking to you. So I, I really appreciate you buying, buying your spots and and staying staying with us the whole time gosh it almost took three hours uh that's by, i think we've just set a world record for the longest box break uh but yeah thank you sir for for chatting with me i really appreciate it and we'll get all this stuff shipped out in the next day or two but uh we will do this again sometime soon and uh hopefully we'll get some more of our uh twitter peers in in the, in the chat with us and and get them to participate but uh have a good rest of your afternoon, sir. Hopefully your fantasy football will go a little bit better, and I will, I will chat with you on the Twitters.